So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rahul, and I work as a solutions engineer with CertStack. And today I'll present how the Drupal module interacts with CertStacks. Especially, one of the products that we have is Cert Studio. So, if anyone has worked here with Solar, they know that it's pretty complex working with Solar. Like it is powerful, but then when it comes to uploading files, changing the configuration, changing the schema, it's a bit tedious to do that. So this is where Search Stacks and Search Studio come into play. So the idea behind Search Studio is it's three basic things, which is it is an advanced modern and personalized search for your website. And that can be seen here. We segregate everything for a search page into two different components, which is mainly the search box and the results. Now that search box has two different parts, and results have different categories. So I'll go over through each of them. So when we think of a search page, the two, one of the major components is the search box, where the user has to write something to get the results. And the two subcomponents can be classified as the auto-suggest, which is nothing, nothing more than what auto-suggestion should you provide the user when he starts writing the characters inside the search box. So we have a tab in Search Studio where you can configure the manual auto-suggest, where you as a user can select or if, he, if the user starts with A, B, and A or P, you can suggest Apple to him instantly. And then you also have the option to s select how many characters you want the user to type in first before the auto-suggest appears. So if you want to see in Search Studio, so this is a Search Studio uh, application. In a Search Studio application, everything is divided into apps. So, so everything you see on, on the left side are different apps. Now, this can be a single website for your page or a single page in your website. It doesn't matter. Then, so this is, this is what I mean by auto-suggest. So we have a search history. So, so whenever user starts typing initially, there's no search history, so you can manually add in words. But as and when there are things in the auto-suggest, it starts auto-populating itself. So you don't have to manually enter it like every week or every month. It just auto picks up. Now display, it says the four suggestions per search after, after the user starts typing two characters. So you can change that. Plus, we have an option to just you add words if you add, have to add one word, or you can choose an entire dictionary. So the next thing is related search terms. So related search terms is basically when you type on Google and you see something, you go on the bottom and you see Google has certain recommendations to it. So we have a similar thing uh, in Search Studio. Now these search, related search terms, can, again, can be manual or auto-generated. For manual searches, we, we suggest that initially when the app is empty and has no data, you go for manual, manual related searches. But when there is a lot of data, uh, we have implemented like machine, le machine learning algorithms that can auto pick up your previous search terms, uh, terms with relevance. Now these analytics come from the analytics dashboard, which I will talk later. So you can, uh, you can configure the auto suggest results as well. Secondly, if you want that manual results should be displayed first, you even have the flexibility to do that. It doesn't matter if, uh, for example, you don't like the auto suggested results, you can completely turn it off and play around with manual search results. So the next component is when we search for a particular term, we are presented by the results. Now these results can be categorized, we categorize as results configuration, relevance results, and relevance modeling. So what do I mean by results configuration is basically how you want to display the results to the user. Like do you want to display the title of a particular thing, description, then it's faceting, whether you want to filter out some results on a particular criteria or not, and then sorting. So the, all these components come into results configuration. For the relevance results, we have stop words, synonyms, and spell check. Like if, you're, if you know about Solar, if you, have to uh, if you have to change any synonym or stop word, you have to completely rewrite the file again. You have to upload it again. But with Search Studio, you can add words sequentially or edit the entire file. You don't have to go through Solar. This is the same thing with relevance modeling. With relevance modeling, we offer 
different things such as search field, global filters, ranking, rules, and promotions. Promotions being the major part, which is being majorly used, which is basically if you want to promote a particular search result on your web page, you can easily do that. And the best part of relevance modeling is you can create different models. For example, you want during holiday one, these results should be displayed first, and during holiday two, the, the other set of results should display first. So you can handle everything within Source Studio with relevance modeling. Yeah. So this is how I mean my results configuration. You can decide whatever text should be displayed as a ribbon field, whether you want a title or a description, and all these fields can be mapped inside Search Studio. Now these are the fields which are available for the records in Solar, and you can map it to something. Once I present the demo, I'll, I'll add more fields to it so that you can know how it picks up uh, fields automatically from the Solar admin. Okay, I'll just start with the demo thing. So I have this uh, web, uh, Drupal website set up, which comes out of the box with Drupal. And we have, okay, we have nine records. We have nine records for it. Right now in Solar Admin for this particular thing, we have, there are zero records. So right now our Drupal website is not connected to Search Studio. So in order to do that, we need, first of all, we need two different, there are two uh, requirements for it. The Search API module and the Search API Solar module. So I'll quickly install them. So if you go to extend and install those two components, modules, search API and search API as well. Okay, we go to configuration tab we go into Search API, and we have an option to add a server and add an index. First, we'll add a server and connect to our Solar Admin. Now we can give any name to it, Drupal Camp. In order to configure, we need Solar Cloud with basic auth so that no one else can access it. The protocol is HTTPS. So now in order to get Solar Node, Solar Port, and default solar collection, we'll go, go to Search Studio. Inside the settings tab, we have a tab called Search API. So when you create the app, the search URL and the suggest URL gets auto-populated. You don't have to create anything. Like you can, you can anyway change, uh, change the collection name, but it automatically comes populated, so you don't need to do that. Now each API has two different credentials, which is the read-only API credentials and read-write search API credentials. When you create an app, it asks for the password, but you can also leave it at, as auto-generated. But I'll suggest that you create a new password because you need, you need that when you configure the so, uh, solar node and the default solar collection, when you need to access it. So the solar node refers to this solar server. Let's copy it. So localhost this. The default port for us is 443. Solar path is, we'll leave as, as it is, because that's a slash. Then we, now this is the solar collection, like the endpoint of it. Now this can also be seen if we go to solar directly, I have the same solar endpoint here. I have Drupal test 449. I'll put it as default solar collection. Now here come, here's the use for the basic auth that I was talking about. For the, in order to access it and index the data, you need the read-write API credentials, which is which you can find again in the search, 
search API tab. That's it. If you click save, in order to verify that it's connected or not, you can see the server connection. It says the solar server could be reached and collect collection, it says the solar connection could be accessed. So if, if, if it says that the solar server couldn't be reached, that means you did not configure the solar node correctly, which is nothing else, which is just this part, that you misspell something. If it says that the collection cannot be reached, that means you misspell the collection node, as simple as that. So if you go back to search API, now we have a ser server set up, it's enabled, we can access it. Now we just need to index the data. In order to create an index, we'll give it an, any name and the content we want to index. I'll say I just want to index the recipes, which are the nine records that we already have. Now the languages, it says all, uh, only those selected, I'll select English. So Search Studio only supports English out of the box, but it also, uh, but it can also access the other languages which are supported by Solar Admin. But you cannot like uh, configure it inside Search Studio. Now the server we Sorry. Yeah. So let's say you have another language, let's say Arabic or Russian or something like that. Who does the actual, I guess, does it depend on, I guess your, your content is already translated, so that's what, is that what it goes for? Yeah, so it will index the data. But for example, if in future you want to add a new field to it, you'll have to go through Solar Admin again. But nothing has to be translated. Right? No, nothing has to be translated. Based on the, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Solar Admin, I guess, uh, takes care of 47 languages. So those are supported by Search Studio. But the only, the only downside is you cannot configure or you cannot change those properties inside Search Studio. In order, if you have to change certain things, you have to go through Solar Admin, download the schema file, and change the, uh, change the schema there. So the server we created in the last step, we'll select the server and we just click save. So it says that it has been created successfully. It says zero out of nine index. So right now there are no records. If I execute the query, there are no records. But now if I click on index now, so all the data that was there, so now we have the nine records. So if I want to change what fields do I want to reflect, I'll go back, go back to my index, fields, add the fields, and then I can select all the fields that I want to index. Like I want to change the content type, I want the ID, language, the images, I'll say title, I'll say done, Save changes. I'll again say index now. I go back. So now I can see that all other properties that I've selected are already indexed. So if you want to add a new a new record, it's as simple as adding a new content to to anything. I add a new recipe. Test recipe preparation time, 10, 10, 10. I can choose an image. And then, save. So the recipe has been created. Since it was just one recipe or a one content, the, uh, the website automatically runs a cron job which indexes the data. So if I go and directly execute the query, okay, it says nine. If not, we can directly go back and manually index it again. So GPI. Oh, did I not publish it?
Okay, it has been updated. Now if I go back. Configuration. shows nine records for now I'll see what what the issue is but now if you go back to the search studio the only th if I go to results configuration I won't be able to see the fields that I added to the solar admin in order to in order to tell search studio that something has changed we'll go to settings search API and then simply do reload schema so once that is completed all the fields which are available on solar admin will be populated in search studio now if you go back to results configuration I can see all the fields which are on Solar Admin are accessible here. Now, in order to see, we have a search preview. Right now, these are the uh, all the default things, the nine results. If I want to dis change how I want the user to see my results, I'll go to results configuration. Say, for example, I want to see the title, and I want to map it as a, as a title. I'll simply add it. The other thing that I can do is I can add say anything, type maybe, and then select it to description, and then add it. You simply publish. And you can go back to search preview, and now you can see that the title and the what, what type of article it is. Like it is a article recipe or something like that. So you have all the flexibility inside Search Studio. You just have to index the date connected to uh, Solar Admin via the Drupal module, and everything gets synced automatically. Now, once once you have done all the configuration and it's live, you also want to analyze the results. You want to see how many clicks are there, how many how many users are coming to your website and searching for a particular term. If that particular term is producing results that you want the user to see, and if the if, it, if they are producing the results, if the user is actually clicking on them. So everything can be accumulated and can be seen on the dashboard. I'll just simply switch the app so that I can show you the results. So this is how it sees. For this particular time period, there were 903 total searches. And out of those 903, 209 were the searches where the user clicked on it. So we calculate the click-through rate. Now, in order to get a deeper dive into it, we have searches where it says how many total searches were there, how many total searches per session was there, then what were the most popular searches that the user searched for, how many times did it appear, how many times did the user search for a term and there were no results for it, we have a tab for that, how many times a, there was a search but the user did not even click on, click on that, and what term was it, then we analyzed that particular data. If you go inside items, you can see there's impression and total clicks. This is so. This is the data which the uh, which have which takes place when the user clicks on a particular item. For example, you have you search for a particular term. There are ten results, and the user clicked on the third item. So you store it. Okay, the user clicked on the third item. Another user comes, and you see a pattern that the user user key, any user that comes and searches for a particular term is clicking on the third third article. So now the logical step is to move the third article to the top so that it doesn't appear at the bottom. So that you can do it in promotions. So this is how you can use analytics from the dashboard itself and then change your promotions in the, uh, in the results configuration and then boost your, boost your search results. Yeah. Now if you want to connect your Drupal website analytics to Search Studio, we, you have to install the Drupal module with it, which is Drupal Search Stacks. Extend, enable the module. And now if you go to 
configuration and the search API again. We have the source stack settings. Now it says global analytics key, which you can go to search studio. This is the app. You go to the analytics API and you can get the analytics key from here. Simply copy it, paste, save configuration. That's that's it. So whatever the user searches on your Drupal website will be analyzed on Source Studio. It's as easy as that, just adding the analytics key. Now if you want to use want to have more flexibility, you can restrict certain users. You can only give access to users that you want. Now there's an uh, there's an also option for auto suggest which search stack has. If you want to use auto-suggest given by search stacks, then, then you have to install another module, which is the search, the search API autocomplete. Extend. Enable the module. Go back. Now it suggest. Now it says auto suggest code. Auto suggest code. In order to get the URL, you can go to search API, and this is your auto suggest. If you want to read out searches through Search Studio, so anything the user searches on your Drupal website will be will go through Search Studio, and then the data can be captured and analyzed. You save, and that's it. That's the entire configuration that you have to do in order to analyze the data, uh, give the flexibility to the user how he wants to display the results and everything. Yeah. And normally, when uh, when we capture the results, it takes about one to one and a half hours to display on the dashboard for the results. Any questions? So let's say that I want to give somebody access to one recipe. How do I do that? Like just one recipe, one node specifically. And I'm thinking on that, or maybe a different set of uh, recipes. But from the dashboard, can I just give them access to that one, or not yet? Like in the permissions level, is that outside search? I mean, you can. So, if you go to Search Studio for that, yeah. You can create a different model for it, and add global filters to it. Now it says include only res results matching with this. This is how you can include and exclude the results. Hmm. But if I open an account for that user, can I just? So I'm thinking on a scenario where, like, they say school of business, and then they have the accounting professors, and they only want to see accounting stuff. So if they log in, mm -hmm. they only want to see stuff related to accounting. So can I do a role for them inside of Search Studio to just see accounting stuff and accounting dashboard and whatnot? Yes. So for that, you can just create a separate app for it. So okay. one app will point to the accounting school, and one app will point to the business school. That's it. Right. So nobody will have access to each other's things. Even though it's in the same group of uh, instance? Yes. Okay. Because the collection names will be different, the data will be indexed separately. Mm. The deployment is the same, but the collections are different for each user. Mm. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, thank you.